Morning. All right. We are live on the internet. We are streaming and welcome people virtually as well as the ones here in the room. So let us take a moment to settle ourselves in, get into whatever your most comfortable prayer position is so that we can connect and align spiritually. Ah, good morning. Thank you, God. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this place. Thank you for these gorgeous people. Ah, it is a good day. It is a good day to acknowledge the truth of who we are. We let it flow. We let it fly. We claim it good and good it is. And so it is. And amen. And Nick is going to lead us. Nick and Sandy are going to lead us in the music. Someone's darkest night I'm so more than meets the eye I cannot be defined I am the thinker that thinks the thoughts That changes things that shape my life I am the thinker that thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life and I am the thinker that thinks the thoughts The changes, things that shape my life I am the thinker that thinks the thoughts I have the power to change my life I have the power to change my life I have the power to change my life Good morning. Welcome home. If you're watching us virtually, please type this in the comments. Everyone look around at your neighbor. Repeat after me. Good morning. I love you this morning. And tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow morning. 
And I sure do appreciate your being here. I sure do appreciate you being here. To our virtual church family, please know that we're saying this to you as well. Help us grow this loving community by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to our pages. So let's read the affirmations right now. When I declare divine order, I remind myself that wherever I am, God is. Order is the truth of my life. I am a glow with the light of God. And now we'll do the September affirmations. When I declare divine order, I remind myself, we just did those. Let's go to the unity reading. It was so good, we had to do it again. Yeah, it was good. Okay. So please join me in affirming unity's five foundational principles. It will be on the screen or it won't. <laughs> there is only one ultimate power in the universe. That power is God, and his nature is absolute, unchanging good. Human beings were created from absolute good, and so our inherent nature is also good. We call the inherent goodness of human beings the Christ. Our thoughts are our creative power. Whatever we persistently focus our thoughts and feelings upon manifest in our lives. Prayer and meditation are essential elements of the spiritual life because they focus our thoughts on the oneness with God and all creation. It is not enough to know the truth. We must put that truth into action in our lives. We must live the truth we know. And so it is. Good morning, I'm your prayer chaplain this morning. And we have two more prayer chaplains that are present in case you want to pray with them. There's Charlotte and Kathy is in the back. And at the end of the service, I'll be standing back there at that door. So anyway, whatever you're growing through, we want to help you go through it with you. Know, with you. Um, our prayer chaplain team would like to pray with you about it. Seek one of us out after the service today to be included in our prayer list. You can fill out a form and put it on the prayer box before or after the service. And there's the prayer box. Thank you, Nana. Or you can click on prayer, prayer request button on the website. It's got it to the right, I think. Prayer works, so let's do it together. I invite you to think of someone or something you'd like to send some love to as we pray together. Delissa Gale. Bo Terrarian, Carol Velez, Orion Parker, Deanna Dunn, Amaja and Roy, Deborah Parker, Mary Margaret Daltridge, Pat Moore, Suki Sir. Together, let us affirm that these loved ones are whole and perfect and complete. We are standing with them knowing that God is already actively working in partnership with each person to grow through the appearance of challenges. Wherever we are, God is, and together, all is well. And while we're in this place of prayer, ah, let us just sit in the peace and the love, in connecting with God, affirming the highest and best for those names that we read and for those other names that we thought of on our own. 
in making that connection that is a connection that is within us and so I invite you to just take a moment to pay attention to what it feels like when you ask yourself what does the divine love within me feel like to me what does the divine love in me feel like to me and I invite you to just sit with that in the silence for a moment The divine love in me is an infinite flow, always going through me, to me, for me, and as me. I accept that flow. I do my work to keep it unblocked by inviting it in by saying divine love is welcome in my experience. Divine love is welcome in my being. Divine love is welcome in my life. I accept all the benefits and the bounty that comes from that. I let it be well. I let it be so. And so it is, and amen. And now Ellie's going to tell us about all kinds of exciting things that are coming up and list back there for you to sign up for. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you're a first time visitor or haven't been here in a long time and have received a welcome bag, please fill out the visitor connection card <clears throat> excuse me, and give to an usher so that we may stay connected. If you haven't received a bag, please raise your hand. We have a gift for you. Our church will be at Greensboro Pride today, 12 to 6, and please come help introduce our church to some people who don't already know about our welcoming spiritual home. Wally, do you know if we have a place yet or where we'll be? I, Miranda will know she, she gets here to set up, which she's there right now. Okay. It's near the railroad tracks on Elm Street, somewhere there. Okay. It's also next to the uh, Presbyterian Church, so we'll be there together. So okay. Oh, we're near the Presbyterian Church. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Wonderful. Also, there's a board meeting Monday, September 19th at 6.30 p.m., Zoom only. The four V's, victim, victor, vessel, and verity. I love those. With Charlotte Laheka, Wednesday, September 21st at 6.30 p.m., Zoom only. I've taken that class, I think, with Todd a long time ago, and it was very, very interesting, so I'm looking forward to that class. Come experience prayers from each level of consciousness, victim, victor, vessel, and verity, and appreciate that prayers from any level of consciousness can be sincere and authentic. After experiencing each of these four different ways of praying and taking some time to meditate on each one, we will make time to share what the experience was for you. I encourage you to come to this one. And then there's the ultimate relaxation. I will pr be presenting that Wednesday, sept 20, September 28th at 6.30, and that's Zoom only. 
and that actually is hypnosis. Certi oh, okay, this is about me. Certified hypnotherapist <laughs> Ellie McFalls will guide you to an ultimate relaxation where you will feel refreshed, renewed, and give you a new tool that you can take with you and use any time you feel stressed or out of sorts. I use this all the time. So, There are sign-up sheets for all our Wednesday nights at the door, so take advantage of those wonderful offerings. And also, we're going to have bowling on Friday, 9.30, not at 9.30, but September 30th, <laughs> from 7 to 9 at Triad Lanes. So Gayla says, fun is not being a good bowler. <laughs> and we may have a contest for being the worst bowler, <laughs> which, will, which I will win hands down. <laughs> Say that again? Stiff competition on that. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. So again, this. Best bowler is Mike one. Worst, we're going to fight for that. Okay. <laughs> so we'll fight for it. It won't, it won't be hard. Um, again, the sign-up sheets are in the back. It's $12. It's $12. Thank you. Thank you. That wasn't on there. Two games? Two games. $12, and that includes shoes. Okay, good. All right, see you then. And Turn the page. Yep. yep. Introducing I'm introducing <laughs> Sandy. Yay! <laughs> Sandy began playing piano at the Hamilton Baptist Church at age 11. Like so many do, he drifted away from church in his 20s while attending UNC, studying broadcasting, and subsequently at NC State, studied computer programming. Around 2000, he was drawn to Unity Church of the Triangle, where he not only reconnected with God, but also with his musical gifts and beginning writing new thought or posi music. I'd say he's done a really good job of that. May 2021, Sandy released his second CD, 95 Seconds of Normal, available now. He is still playing regularly at a number of new thought churches across North Carolina. We wholeheartedly welcome Sandy. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so uh, I saw the talk topic was on angels, and I'm actually here today because of an, a an angel was sent to me. Um, at the end of 2014 and heading into uh, to 2015, I went through the worst stage of my life up to that point. Um, in a period of four months, my marriage ended, um, my church closed. Uh, the job I had had for 20 years, I was laid off. My cat, my, my, uh, my dog died, and uh, my house flooded with sewage. And after all of that, I met Elaine Penn. She walked into my life while my, the floor of my house was, was plywood. Um, and we've been friends ever since. And this is a song that we co-wrote uh, about two years ago. It's called These Hands. <laughs>
like rays of sun No one knows just where they'll go Yes, they can change the world These hands So raise your flag up high Till the world is free Nail your colors bright To a wall of peace Light a blazing fire Play an old peace song Now's the time to stand Together strong Thank you. That was wonderful. And I'm probably going to bring that up in a few minutes while I'm talking. Um, good morning, everybody. Ah, so um, today's lesson is called Touched by an Angel. At some point, I don't remember exactly when, I decided I, I would build a couple of talks around. I'm always looking for a theme that we can do over a month or several months or whatever. And, um, and this, I was like, well, I only really have two TV shows that I'm connected to in some way that have like a spiritual message. Um, I also worked on private practice and the mentalist, but um, anyway, so we're not talking about them. And uh, so, but um, so last week we talked about guiding light a little bit. And, uh, and then today I wanted to talk about uh, touched by an angel and then ultimately looking at a biblical angel story and the metaphysics in it for us. Um, but to start this out, I'm actually going to back up much further. There was a long-held relationship between uh, Della Reese and Red Fox, uh, so much so that at some point she had gone to visit him at a theater that he was performing at and uh, just to hang out with an old friend backstage before the show started. And as they were talking, it came up that she hadn't had very many bookings of late. 
and um, and she you know needed to find somebody to to get a little bit more regular income coming in. And Red reached over and picked up the phone and called the producers of the show he was doing that night and said. <coughs> I'm not going to be able to make it tonight. I'm sick, but you're lucky. Della Reese is sitting right here, and she's ready to perform tonight. And uh, and he gave her his job for the night. Um, and so they went on to then be uh, cast together in, in uh, a movie called Harlem Nights that I dare say not many church services have discussed. Um, but... Uh, I've heard some quotes that I heard her say before that I will not say here today, but when I saw it, I laughed and I said, that's my minister. Um, so uh, anyway, apparently what they did when the camera was not rolling was even better than what we all saw anybody that saw the movie because those two would just riff off of each other and, you know, kind of, you know, one insult to the next insult, you know, that kind of thing. That that entertained Eddie Murphy so much that Eddie then created a show called The Royal Family. It was a sitcom for uh, Red and Della to do together. And uh, while they were filming that, I don't know how many, if, whether it was the first season or after that, while they were filming that, um, Red, in a rehearsal, fell over and had a heart attack. And, and at first, because that was one of his Pratt's, you know, Pratt -y jokes that he'd follow and be like, oh, I'm dying, I'm dying. They thought he was joking, but he had really had a heart attack on the set and they had to rush him to the hospital. And unfortunately, that's the day he passed away and made his transition. And so Della and her husband and Red's widow and the producers of the show were out there at the hospital when the producer, when the doctors came out and said, I'm sorry, he didn't make it. And the producers immediately started saying to each other, well, I mean, what are we going to do? This whole show got built on Red and Della and really it got sold on Red's name. How are we going to keep this show going? And Della got so pissed off because they're having this conversation in front of uh, Red's widow who just lost her husband. And what they're talking about is how we're going to save our butts and our money and our, you know, right? So that show went on a little bit longer. They brought Jack A. Harry in. They did another season or two, whatever. It ended. Della swore off television. She said, I'm never going to do television again because if I was to fall over and die and they had those kind of conversations in front of Franklin, that's her husband, she said, I will come back from the dead just to make their life miserable. And she said, I'd rather just go tour and do concerts and do my own thing and, and not do TV anymore. And then she got a call to uh, do a pilot for Touched by an Angel. And, um, and she said, no, I'm not doing TV anymore. And... Uh, I'm, you know, and they said, and she said, and my husband and I are getting ready to go on a vacation. And I'm not giving up a vacation with my husband um, because that was the most important thing. He, like, he was number one most important thing in her life, and she made it very clear to everybody. So they say, well, look, there's no way this show is going to get picked up anyway. You might as well get the check, and we're shooting it on a lot in Wilmington, North Carolina. That's where they shot the pilot of the show. So why not get a vacation with your husband at the beach and pick up a check while you're here? And that's how she got talked into doing the show. Um, so, and then when they did it, um, uh, that uh, Roma came into the tr in makeup trailer to meet her for the first time. And she says, um, hi, I wanted to come introduce myself to you. I'm Roma Downey. I'll be working with you. And extended her hand for a handshake to which Della looked at and laughed and she said, oh baby, I don't shake hands, I hug. And she just wrapped her up into a hug. Uh, to which I'm gonna show you a clip in a few minutes, but this isn't in the clip I'm gonna show you where uh, Roma said there's no safer place uh, on the planet than in the arms of Della Reese. And I can tell you myself that that is true. Uh, so anyway, they do the pilot. The pilots included wings and kind of stuff for angels that they were like, yeah, that's not going to fly. But there was something about it that Della knew was right. So they had the pilot. They were shopping it around. Nobody was buying it yet. And Della was already doing the church in Los Angeles. And she stood at a pulpit, very similar to this. And uh, she said, I'm going to ask you all to join me in consciousness. And we're going to de declare this show is uh, good and highly favored right now. And she said, we're going to get this show. And, um, and it's, and during those days, uh, when reruns were kind of a different thing than they are now, it was said then if you could get on a TV show that ran for five seasons, you could live off of that for the rest of your life because of the, the residuals. So she said, I'm claiming right now that I'm going to book a TV show that is going to run for 10 years 
and uh, and Touch by an Angel ended up running for nine. Um, the other thing that I missed was when she was contemplating and still not quite ready to grab it and do it, um, she was in prayer about it. And she said she heard just as though there were another voice in the room that God said, if you will do this for me, for me, if you will do this for me, you will never have to work again. And she did it and she definitely, it took her definitely to a whole other level of fame and fortune than anything else that she had ever done. So um, anyway, I also, I don't know, if any of you don't know, the guy on the far right, um, I had to see which hand I would write with on that. Um, uh, he played Andrew, the angel of death, and his real life name was John Die. His last name was, it was D-Y-E, but still, his last name was Die. Um, so I just always thought that was funny. Um, so after they did, they did the first season, the network said, thank you all. It's been a good, you know, shot, but, you know, we're not coming back. Della tells the crew and, and everybody, she said, look, you all go do what you need to do to feed your families, but don't get yourself too tied up because we're coming back for a second season. This is going to be, this was before it had started airing. She said, it's going to be a big hit. We're coming back. Don't get yourself too tied up. And then they came back and they were like number one and top 10 or whatever, all that stuff. And at the end of that season, everybody was running over to her and said, what did God say to you about next season? And, uh, <laughs> She said, we're doing 10 seasons, and they did nine. So um, anyway, what, the reason in telling all that story isn't just, you know, the fun of TV, but it's in making decisions. And like she had, and the reason for me telling you a little bit more of her relationship with Red was she had a deep-seated emotional decision around I'm not doing this anymore because it hurt people when it happened in this way so she had a she had made a decision that had emotion attached to it but she was willing to in prayer let that go and then claim the highest and good that she possibly could get for it and uh and that can happen as much in our lives and whatever endeavors and things that we work on as it did for her in that now, after the show had started going, Roma had an interesting experience that I, I'm going to just let her tell you all. And so we'll play the clip. It's about three and a half minutes. And it's a prayer. That I have tried yeah. to take through all things that I do in my life. Uh, we were filming in Salt up. Lake City, and my uh, baby girl, Riley, had had... Eric's rocking it. He's filling in for Chris and this week and next week. it's a prayer that I have tried... Nope. And it's a prayer that I have tried to take through all things that... It's just not getting to the... Customize and save with Liberty Mutual. If you, if you click on it to play where you can see it, does it not show up for us? Okay, well, then I'll just tell you about it. Um, and it's a prayer that I have tried... Okay, so I'll tell you. Roma's uh, had a baby, and her daughter had just some minor uh, medical challenges, and they were shooting Touch My Angel. They actually did the nine seasons in Salt Lake City. And um, so she'd gotten involved with the children's hospital there, and it was around Christmas time, and her daughter was now fine, and she went to, you know, kind of visit because now they're on a hit TV show. And so she had on her little Santa hat, and she's going around and visiting the kids. And as she's going down the hall, this family comes out of her room, and it becomes really clear that a child has just died. And so she took off the hat, and she, you know, tried to, you know, kind of, become less visible as much as possible uh, to respect them and give them their moment. And the mother looked up and she saw Roma and she said, Monica, 
which was the name of her angel character. And she came over and she hugged her and she said, oh, thank you so much. She said, I prayed to God that there would be an angel here for my baby and here you are. And Roma goes back and she calls Della and she's so upset. And, um, and she tells the story of what the woman said and Della's like, I'm not sure what you're upset about. And she said, well, because I'm not an angel and I'm not Monica and I just wanted to say to her, no, 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 I'm just an actress. And, and Della said, in that moment, angel girl is what she called her in real life too. She said, in that moment, angel girl, that woman didn't need an actress. She needed an angel. And if we are going to do this show and do it successfully and truly help people's lives, then we have to be willing to get ourselves out of the way and allow God to work through us. And that is what happened in that moment. So uh, that's that story. Sorry, uh, Roma couldn't tell it to you, but uh, that's the story. And I thought it was so important. And it's, a, it's such an important story of being willing to get out of the way. See, as I was saying, I, I worked on a show called The Mentalist that was took place with a California Bureau of Investigation. There was no one on that set that I'm aware of who thought that part of their responsibility in filming the show was to to uh, help the law enforcement lives of people across. You know, they were just telling a crime drama, right? And I worked on a show called Private Practice, and nobody there was like, "We're going to advance medicine by doing this show." But those three people, whose pictures were up there a moment ago, seriously took the responsibility of we are God's messengers when we are telling these stories and we have a great responsibility to honor that. And, uh, and so that's what became special about that show in its ways. Last night I decided I should watch at least one episode cause I hadn't watched one in a long time before I did this today. And, um, so before I went and turned the TV on, I kind of spoke to Dell and I was like, all right, I need you to help pick the right episode for me to watch. And so I go in my room, I turn the TV on, I get Paramount Plus on, I pull up the show, and then I'm like, all right, let me just shoot down a couple of seasons and see what feels right. And I stop on season four, and it's like, I kind of hear one more. I was like, okay. Season five, I hear yes. And I'm like, okay. I click on that, and then there's like 23 episodes. And then I close my eyes, and I just start pushing the down button. And I stopped, and it was like, no, some more. Okay. And I pushed, and I stopped, and I said, there, yes. And um, it ended up being one of the clip shows or a compilation show that was showing lots of, of scenes from previous episodes. So I was taken to, I'm like, if you're only going to watch one episode, then let me give you as much bang for your buck as I possibly can. And so I, you know, however many different episodes I got by watching that one. So, you know, at the end of the day, they did this, what they called the reveal. And that's where the light would shine behind them. And I'm an angel from God. And the message was the same always. It, you know, it might sound slightly different speaking to the different characters, but it's you need to know that God loves you and supports you in all that you do. That God loves you and supports you. And when you say that, it sounds like we're talking about this separate person named God that loves you like my mother loves me. And it's like God does love me like my mother loves me and like all other love because God is within me. But when we start talking about well, God's within me. God's not separate than me. It starts to sound very intellectual. It's very true. God is in all of us, not separate from us. And yet there is this special, powerful thing that we know that we call God that is certainly unique and, and in its own separateness, but not uh, within our human experience. When we're thinking within, from our human minds about our human experience and our human lives, and then there's this, this other part of us that we're not paying attention to. So that's what makes it seem separate. But it's still important to just like link into God, just God, full love, loves me, the human part of me too, even when I'm screwing something up or doing something in some other way or not connecting to, right? Like this morning, you know, I, I came feeling like I'm a horse. I was trying to sing coming here and I drank a protein shake and I'm trying to sing this new song of Michael Gotts and it was, 
you know, so it's like, oh, my throat is broken and, and I've done something by climbing ladders all these weeks, painting that building. And now it's like, every time I walk, it's burning across there. And I'm like, I don't know what's wrong. I broke my foot or my leg or, and I'm like, you know, I'm just like showing up here today, honestly, like broken and being like, I'm going out to that pride thing for six hours and I don't have a chair in my car. I need somebody to bring me a chair. Cause I can't. It was the word that came out, stand there for six hours. And, it, and then I had to catch myself in the truth that we teach and we know and be like, you can if you need to, but just put out there that you need a chair and a chair will show up because there's not one in my car because I took it out the other day and I forgot to put it back in. So, yes. All right, chair, see? So, but it's like, there's like, look, we have our human moments. Like, like I... My leg hurts when I walk right now. I can't, I'm not going to lie and say it doesn't hurt. I just can't then lie to myself and say I'm broken. You know, it's like, I can't, I can't heal this or I can't figure out how to heal this. I've been doing every stretch and anyway, it, it's about like you have those moments and then you're like, God, God, now let me get myself lined up there and immediately the pain will lessen even if it doesn't go away, like, and now I'm on that road, right? So here's the last part that I, I want to read to you. This is from Daniel. This is all of chapter 10. I'm going to um, give you some of the, ba at the end of the day, what this is talking about is that when you're, when you're caught up in that sense consciousness of my leg hurts, my throat scratchy, when you're in that moment, you're, there's, there's this thing called Daniel, which we call spiritual judgment, that we then have to, trust and be willing to trust and be guided by instead of being like, well, no, because the truth of the matter is, you know, the world has taught me and my experiences have taught me that this and this and this and this and this. And like, if this is happening, it might mean, da, 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 you know, right. And, and then it's being like, okay, no, I'm not going to follow that. I'm going to allow my spiritual judgment to walk me through this. And that takes faith because I've got all these physical examples that are speaking in the opposite direction. And so that's where you have to on purpose choose to. That's our theme for this year, living on purpose, not with purpose. That's good too. But making the decision to living on purpose, make the decision to be guided by my spiritual judgment and guide me towards if I need a pill or whether I need to just stop talking for a little bit or whatever it is, that spiritual judgment will guide us. So I'm going to read this and I give you a couple of of spiritual uh, or metaphysical definitions, but mostly the words as you start recognizing that we're talking about your, not just some other random person, your spiritual judgment and how to find and, and where you have the challenges of being like, well, but, and then following it anyway. So it says in the third year of Cyrus and Cyrus is the ruling idea of sense consciousness, the king of Persia and Persia represents that middle space between the outer and the inner consciousness. A message came to Daniel, our spiritual judgment from God. And it was explained in a vision. The message was about a dreadful war and it was true. Daniel wrote, for three weeks, I was in sorrow. I ate no fancy food or meat. I drank no wine, and I put no olive oil on my face or hair. Then, on the 24th day of the month, I was standing on the banks of the great Tigris River uh, when I looked up, and all rivers are streams of consciousness, right? Uh, when I looked up, and saw someone dressed in linen and wearing a solid gold belt. His body was like a precious stone, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming fires, his arms and legs like polished bronze, and his voice like a roar of, cra of a crowd. Although the people who were with me did not see the vision, they became so frightened that they scattered and hid. Only saw this, I only saw this great vision. I became weak and pale, and at the sound of his voice, I fell face down. This vision, by the way, was Michael, the archangel. And, and Michael represents divine inspiration and realization of the all-conquering power of God. So when we see that, when we see that all conquer and recognize that in the experience that is otherwise trying to convince us the world's falling apart, right? There, all those other, you know, chattering 
they they go away because they can't be in the same it's like dark can't be in the presence of light it goes away when you see it and then focus in on it that's what it's saying here it says that he raised me up on my hands and knees and then said daniel spiritual judgment your god thinks highly of you and he has sent me so stand up and pay close attention i stood trembling while the angel said daniel don't be afraid god has listened to your prayers since the first day you humbly asked for understanding and he has sent me here but the guardian angel of persia that's that middle land between the outer and that 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 pressing force right opposed me for 21 days then michael who is one of the strongest guardian angels came to rescue me from the kings of Persia. Now I have come here to give you another vision about what will happen to your people in the future. While this angel was speaking to me, I stared at the ground speechless. Then he appeared in human form and touched my lips. And I said, sir, this vision has brought me great pain and has drained my strength. Why would that be the case? Because he's so, he's like, he's thinking I'm, I'm not worthy is what it comes down to. Like, I can't do that. I'm not qualified to that. And plus there's all these negative proofs. You know, so I can't live up to that. That's what he was seeing in that moment saying, I see that and I've got pain from it because I don't think I can live up to that. And he said, I'm merely your servant. How can I possibly speak with someone so powerful when I am almost too weak to get my breath? The angel touched me a second time and said, don't be frightened. God thinks highly of you and he intends this for your good to be brave and strong. At this, I regained my strength and replied, please speak, you have already made me feel much better. When you connect to that and you admit, look, I don't know that I can do this, but I'm trusting in this, you will immediately feel just a little bit more and then a little bit more and a little bit more. I can live up to my highest potential. That's what we're talking about. The God within you can help you live up to your highest potential in moments where you think, I don't know what to do with this, right? Then the angel said, now, do you understand why I have come? Soon I must leave to fight against the guardian angel of Persia. Then after I have defeated him, the guardian angel of Greece, which is the intellect in man, will attack me. I will tell you what is written in the book of truth. But first, you must realize that no one except Michael, the guardian of Israel, which is our spiritual consciousness, is on my side. So what is all that talking about? They're going to war and that thing. We do that every day. We just don't call it war. We call it kind of our fighting thoughts. So as soon as you get rid of the one part, then the intellect's going to step up and be like, well, you know, all that spiritual poo-poo stuff sounds lovely. But I mean, the truth is, I mean, you know, my intellect shows me that this is wood and this is hard and it can't be moved. And God says, yes, it can, you know. And so... I don't know why I did that, but um, <laughs> it's just to say our intellect is going to get in there and we're, it's going to work hard sometimes to convince us that we shouldn't try this or we shouldn't do this when it feels like our calling, right? Um, like I try and use mundane, silly examples instead of like the big miracle kind of seeming ones. Last night when I went to choose one episode of a show to watch, there were nine seasons and they averaged 22 or 23 episodes a season. And I closed my eyes and I found one that could give me multiple scenes of multiple shows, not because of anything that I, as my human experience, magically pulled off, because I put it into the spiritual request area. Like I said, I was talking to Della, but Della is absolutely in that non-physical plane of godness that is within all of us now. And we all have that kind of communication that we can have. And the truth is, you can have that same communication with somebody that you may that is still alive and walking around on this planet that you're not currently speaking to, you can still sit down and speak to the spiritual part of them right where you are. You can go ahead and do all your full apologies on the spiritual plane of that and your forgivenesses without actually having to speak to the human being. Cause you may be like, well, I'm, I'm spirited up and I'm ready to do the forgiveness, but they're not 
in a place to hear it or accept it, so it would be a waste of my time. Well, it's only a waste of your time if you're not really prepared to do it, because if you're coming up with excuses of it, like you can go ahead and do your work and then freely go about your life. And whether you know it or not, you've already benefited that person. You've benefited that person by releasing the negative connection that you were holding to them, right? And so I did that on the other end of it, just saying, here's something I need, here, I, I feel like before I go speak about this, I need this thing. And then I allowed myself to be guided to it. And I trusted because, see, that one was easy to trust because, okay, give me another show. I'll watch that show. I was willing to watch any show, right? But I was guided to one that would give me even extra because I was willing to be guided to it. And so that's the invitation when we are all touched by an angel all the time. An angel is simply a message from God. And that's from within us screaming out, hey, I know that outer world is giving you some examples right now, but I'm telling you, ignore that one and do this. And most of the time we say, well, I can't ignore that one because, and then we fill in our BS, our belief system. Um, I know y'all are thinking something else. I was too, but I didn't say it. Um, <laughs> Because both are true in the belief system, right? Then we fill in the blank and we give ourselves excuses to be limited in that moment. We don't have to be limited ever. We may have some moments of challenge that feels like we're kind of surrounded with some lack and limitation. And then you can say, okay, I see where I am because it's foolish of me not to acknowledge where I am because that's going to help me get to where I want to go. I was thinking, I'll close with this. I was thinking that... Um, that, you know, there comes a question of like, well, how do I, you know, are you saying God never says no? Well, not really, no. Because, but I'm saying that you may hear in a prayer, no, and it be a spiritual answer. But how you'll know whether it's the ego or the spirit saying it is, is there the yes that follows it? It's like, if it's just no, you can't do that because all these negative reasons behind it. That's your ego. If it's no, Okay, well, if this is no, then what's the yes? And you've got an answer to the yes. Now you're being guided by spirit. Allow yourself to be touched because the messages are there. I love you. I bless you. I appreciate you. I behold the Christ in you. Thank you for being here today. So um, now is our time to give our love offerings and our tithes. And uh, if you're watching us virtually, there's donate buttons to click wherever you're watching. You can also do it through Venmo at unity-greensboro. If you're giving here in the room, I invite you to place your hands on your gift. If you give electronically, I invite you to place your hands on your heart and let us all say this prayer together. That one. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And let us sing this song together. Sing that all afternoon, because I do. <laughs>
Let's close our eyes, remembering that we're one with God. We know that we're surrounded by angels. We are angels. When we go out into the world and we take the information we learn here and share it with other people, they want to know what we've got, and they've got it too. So we have to go out, show them you are the light of God. I am the light of God. We're so grateful for every gift given today. We thank God for Wally, Sandy, Nick, everybody, me. <laughs> and so it is. Amen. So this is another song I wrote, and <clears throat> it's, um, of course, Della Reese is well known for her voice and music, and music has always played a, a, a major part in all spirituality, and when I have been in my darkest places, it has been music that has always been my go-to to return to me, and that's what this song is about. It's called Sing Me Into the Light.
So sing with all your might So I can carry on the fight And find my way back home to love Sing me into the light Sing me into the light to the light. Thank you. That is the perfect prayer to always help and ask to be guided into the light because within you can still live this human experience and be it's not like the poltergeist don't go into the light definitely go into the light here go into the light because the light will give you the best experience of the human experience as well so uh, thank you for all being here today and I hope that many of you will come out to Greensboro Pride we're on Elm Street and Miranda has texted uh, that our booth is located in front of the community theater on Elm Street, and she suggests parking in the Green Street deck. And um, so, and then she says, please bring chairs. Um, so anyway, so I hope you'll come out. This is our opportunity to introduce ourselves to people who maybe don't know that we exist. And, uh, and so that requires us being there to do the introduction. So I hope you'll come out and join us for that. Now next week, um, we are gonna have hippie church and so we're going to have some hippie music and uh this is for everybody except ron who's already covered on this i invite you to break out your hippie clothing like 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 if you got something tie-dye bring it if whatever else means hippie to you bring it if you don't know what that means call me i'll give you ron's number he can tell you and uh that's that is not legal here yet so we won't be doing that but um, anyway, so look, we're going to have fun. We're going to talk about unconditional love and, uh, and, and just have a good, fun experience together. And so the more you buy into it, the more we'll have fun. I don't even think I own any tie-dye right now, so I'll figure that out. Um, and uh, I accept your, your love and travel blessings as I, I'm going to Lake Junaluska this week to uh, hang out with a bunch of unity ministers. And so... Um, I will see you all next Sunday for Hippie Church. So let us, um, let's sing the peace song and do the prayer for protection. And yes? Oh, you're right. Well, I don't think they're in there. Yeah, let's, because they're next to us and Mark's there, I think. Let's, let's sing the peace song.
and together let us say, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. Thank you. And thank you in advance for helping stack the chairs real quick.